What is going on? So today we're talking about data management for filmmakers. For film makers. Last night we went out for my buddy's birthday. He had a big extravaganza. Drank a little bit of tequila. It was a lot of tequila. Drinking my coffee now. It's like afternoon. Still a little rough. Okay, so what we're talking about today is data management. Data management is probably one of the most important things as a filmmaker. If your stuff is not organized properly and things aren't set up right, you're gonna lose files and you're gonna like accidentally erase something or it's gonna take you hours to do something that would take probably 10 minutes. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is break down this topic into two categories. One is data management on set, that's shooting. And then two, data management in editing, everything that I have done to really speed up my workflow. And I think that's something that you guys can do in your workflow as well. Now that I'm all coffeeed up, let's do this. I've got my notes. Let's see what I got in my notes. Okay, so when you're shooting, there's two different ways to approach this. The first way is when you're shooting something kind of on the go, documentary, travel, vlogs, any of stuff where you don't know what's gonna happen and you don't know how much footage that you're gonna get. So what I do is that I have enough space to shoot what I think I'm gonna shoot and then probably double that. So I'm not dealing with data transferring while I'm out in the field. I was going an entire day of shooting or a couple days if it's like camping or something and I just have enough media so that I'm able to just keep shooting versus having to do a data dump in the field. The worst thing about doing a data dump in the field is A, you're bringing extra gear with you. Also, you don't, like if something goes wrong, it's just, there's a lot of things that could happen when you're transferring and you're in a setting where you're like on the go. Just plan to have enough media so you can shoot an entire day's worth of content and not have to transfer. Okay, so the second way is that if you're shooting too much data and that doesn't make sense, or you're in a setting where you can transfer on set. I do this a lot in our production company. We'll be shooting five cameras. We'll be rolling them for just hours and hours because we're shooting fitness videos and that kind of stuff. And that stuff is just a lot of data. So we burn through cards, we burn through data. So I have to do a data transfer there on set. So what I do for my data transfer is that I always transfer from the card to a hard drive. I never transfer from the card to a hard drive and then from that hard drive to another hard drive. You always want to transfer from your source media. I always have multiple copies before I erase the card. So what I do is I'll take my card, I'll transfer it to hard drive one. That's my main hard drive. Then I'll pull that hard drive out and then I'll do the exact same transfer to hard drive two from the car. Now, once I have a copy on both and I've checked them and everything looks good, I'm gonna now erase the card that goes back in the camera. And the reason I do that is you don't wanna have an issue where the first transfer, something got messed up and now you don't have the file. So I always have two copies after I shoot. I always do a backup no matter what, even when I'm traveling, and I'm doing my transfers at the end of the day, I always double my footage. So I always put a backup on a separate hard drive. If your hard drive crashes, it's a lot worse to have to reshoot all your stuff than it is to just buy a second hard drive. So always have two copies. And if you really wanna be safe, you would do a third copy. Okay, so now I have two copies of my footage. I get into the editing bay. All right, so the first thing I do after I do my dump, and that's I organize all my footage, but how I organize stuff is by year, month, date, and then I do a description of what it is that I shot. Because now everything's gonna be easy to find based on date. From there, I'll organize it more into different folders within that folder, depending on the shoot. So if I have a multi-cam shoot, I'm definitely gonna be doing camera A, B, C, or it might be like I'm doing multiple videos, so this footage is for this, this footage is for this. I might do a situation where one will be B-roll, one will be interviews, but I always organize first by the date, and that gets me into the folder where I can now start organizing it by other things in that folder. The reason being, when you have tons and tons of footage like me, I have just so much footage that it's ridiculous that I want to be able to find it quick and the quickest way is date and a reference and that I can instantly find anything I need in my library out of the raw footage. Another thing is the file name and this is something I'll do when I'll get in the edit bay before I actually bring the footage into my editing software and that is I'll add a unique code to each shot. So when you're shooting on the same camera over and over a lot of these cameras they will reset and you'll have the same file name multiple times in your bigger library which is really annoying. So what I do is I use this program called Name Changer, and it basically allows me to do batch name changes, I'll drop in all my files, and I'll rename it. And usually what I'll do is I'll put the date and the camera in front of the file name so that I can organize stuff by date again. I know it's gonna be a big long name, but I, I can instantly find anything that I need. And that's about the most I do for the files in terms of changing data and all that is I'll just 
put a tag on there so everything's unique. So after I've done some name changing and made sure all the folders are organized properly, what I do is I then make a third backup of the footage in the edit bay. And that's because my working drive, I'm gonna have one copy and then I'm gonna have double backups until that project is finished. Once I finish that project, I'm gonna dump one of those and I'll just have two backups. And I always keep two backups of everything because if a hard drive fails, you're screwed and you lost all that footage. What I always do is keep two unless I'm working on the project, then I'll have three. And that's a working and two backups. So now when I'm ready to work on this project, what I'll do is I'll bring the footage into my editing software. I'm using Final Cut X. So what I do is when I import it, I import it based on the folder. And that way I already have everything structured by my folder structure in Final Cut. And I'll even take it a step further and start going through in keywording footage. And this is because I'm using footage from different shoots all the time. In Final Cut, there's a way to keyword your footage so that if you type in, I want drones of a beach, I'm gonna find all my drone beach shots and everything's gonna pop up at once. For those of you that are Final Cut X editors, I'm gonna do another video soon on the whole keywording aspect because I think it's a huge tool in Final Cut that's amazing. And for me, whenever I finish a shoot, I'm gonna cut out different shots that I wanna use for like stock footage or things that I might use in the future. And I make sure that all my keywording is set up properly so that I can always find these shots. Because like when I'm shooting videos like this, for example, I might be diving back to a year ago to grab footage to look at different things. I might be doing something with drones and I wanna reference drone footage. Instead of me having to dig through folders, even though I have it set up pretty nicely, I can do it just in Final Cut with a few keystrokes and I can find the footage I need. I think it's one of the best features that a lot of people just don't use. And it does take time on the front in organizing, be able to get your library in a way where things are so easily found, but it's definitely worth the time it takes to build. But when you have a strong system, so I've set this system up years ago and I've been using it ever since. You need to find the system that works for you. These, This is the way I do it. Maybe you can pull something from this or from this it will inspire you to create your own system so that when you shoot, you could always plug things into your system and your workflow so that you're not just throwing folders all over the place. I've seen people's hard drives that are just a complete cluster. And it's like, I, I just, I don't understand how someone can edit like that. Like what if you're looking for footage, you're sitting there digging through hard drives or digging through all your folders. You know, like keep yourself clean, keep yourself organized. As a filmmaker, you wanna spend more time being a creator and less time trying to find things. So spend the time on the front end, organize everything so that it allows you to have more time to create the stuff that you wanna create and make some awesome films. All right guys, that is it for the video. If you like this video and you wanna see more filmmaking tutorials, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I got a lot of cool content coming, a lot of awesome camera tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone stuff, I don't know, a lot of just filmmaking stuff just a lot of filmmaking videos and guys if you haven't already make sure you head over to instagram and check us out at wanderworks and i will see you on the next one